Hey everyone, thanks for your time. In the news video for this past week, I'll look past the post-election elephant in the room for the most part, with a lot of news about Artemis II milestones and the Artemis III related Starship test flight. NASA started stacking the Artemis II flight vehicle, but then they stopped again. There's no news about an Orion heat shield decision, but putting the bottommost segments of the SLS-5 segment boosters on the mobile launcher wouldn't make much sense if the space agency were ruling out a flight next year. After that, we're right back to a wait and see posture. It's the next two solid rocket motor segments that start the 12 month stacking clock, and we don't know when that might happen. I also got a little more context about the heat shield decision, even if there isn't much clarity attached to it, and speaking of lack of clarity, the murky schedules for Artemis 2 and 3 haven't changed. Anyway, let's go ahead and dig into a lot of details this time. Coincidentally, there was a flurry of Artemis 2 news and updates this past week with Orion and SLS, but the biggest Artemis-related activity was the sixth Starship flight test. SpaceX conducted the test in the local afternoon on Tuesday, November 19th. It probably doesn't need to be said, but anyway, Starship development is covered in breadth and depth on other channels, such as NSF, which provides 24-7 coverage of Starbase activities. It's worth pointing out because the focus here is on the Artemis angles to that. Although these initial attempts at reproducible booster catches on the launch pad are spectacular and get a lot of attention, the top-ranked test objective by SpaceX preflight was the one that probably meant the most to Artemis in the short term, which was an in-space restart of one of the ship's Raptor engines. The short test occurred about 38 minutes into the test flight. Uh, as you're now way down the force up. of Earth's gravity. And just heard the call out for startup. As the post-flight update that SpaceX published says, the restart test sets the stage for eventual Starship orbital flight tests, which sets the stage for the first big Artemis-related Starship orbital demonstration, the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer demo. As has also been the case, like with NASA and their Artemis roadmaps, we're still waiting for an update from SpaceX on the Starship roadmap for next year. It's not clear yet when the next flight test, number 7, is planned, but we'll stand by for that. During the countdown, the SpaceX broadcast of the test on November 19th showed some renders of the future, including a rare depiction of a Starship HLS docked with Orion, presumably for the Option A crewed lunar landing demonstration planned for Artemis 3. NASA renders always show a quote-unquote reference vehicle lunar lander with Orion or Gateway. There are lots of rumors and questions about what happens next year with the Government Efficiency Review and whether Orion and SLS survive that, but interesting to see that kind of Artemis III reference two weeks after the election. I noted in last week's news update video that there were whispers that Artemis II stacking was going to begin, and we saw why throughout the past week. On Monday, November 18th, NASA Kennedy Space Center Public Affairs posted imagery of the first of two SLS solid rocket booster aft assemblies being staged for rollout of the RPSF, the Rotation Processing and Search Facility. The RPSF consists of multiple buildings spread out over an area north of the vehicle assembly building. After the loaded solid rocket motor segments are delivered to KSC on rail cars, they all are offloaded in the Rotation Building but the two aft assemblies are the only ones that stay there. They are integrated in two build-up stands in the building. That work was more or less completed early this year, and since then they've been in dwell, waiting for the call to start Artemis II vehicle integration. There's more to say about the overall schedule with the heat shield decision and the stacking clock in a little bit, but apparently the checkout meeting ahead of stacking was held and the two aft assemblies were lifted out of their side-by-side -side build up stands in the rotation building and placed on transportation pallets last week. That began with the left-hand aft assembly and then the right-hand unit was staged on a second transportation pallet right behind it in front of the rolling door. In this B-roll shot looking up, we get an interesting view of the bottom of the booster, which gives a view of the hydraulic steering or thrust vector control system with the two exhaust ports that stick out. In the middle is the throat plug, which serves as an environmental barrier until ignition of the booster discharges it. On November 18th, one of the KSC KMAG transporters picked up the left-hand aft assembly, 
moved it out of the rotation building, past the East Park site where Mobile Launcher 2 construction continues, a couple of blocks to the VAB, setting the booster segment and pallet down in the VAB transfer aisle. That's a little different than with Artemis 1, which predominantly used High Bay 4 as the area where vehicle elements would be prepared for the crane lift for stacking on Mobile Launcher 1 in High Bay 3. The Artemis 2 SLS core stage takes up a good part of the southern section of the transfer aisle, and in addition to the incidental shots of Mobile Launcher 2, there are some here of the core stage. More to say about that a little later, too. The first aft assembly was prepared for lifting the next day, November 19th. A 4.384 lifting beam is picked up by one of the two 325-ton VAB cranes, the one that services high bays 3 and 4. The 384 beam was then attached to the clevis at the top of the segment. The aft skirt connection points to the pallet were disconnected, and it was lifted up through the high bay 3 diaphragm and into the integration cell, and then lowered down onto the left-hand vehicle support posts on the ML. The process was then repeated with the right-hand aft assembly. The right-hand aft assembly was moved from the RPSF rotation building to the VAB transfer aisle on Thursday, November 21st, and lift operations were performed overnight Thursday into Friday, November 22nd. A few pictures of the lift operations were posted on social media on Friday, and we'll wait to see a larger set either next week, Thanksgiving week, or after the holiday. So NASA has started Artemis II stacking, and it says something about the overall schedule. However, the space agency is not ready to tell us what that exactly is. As I went over last week, the stacked boosters are a limited operational life item. They can be kept that way generically for up to 12 months once that clock starts. But as I also noted, the clock doesn't start with the aft assemblies. It starts with the first field joint mate. That's where the Orion base heat shield decision comes into play. NASA has indicated they want to make that decision before stacking the vehicle, and they could do this without starting the stacking clock. Placing the aft assemblies on the mobile launcher suggests that NASA is reviewing flight rationale for Artemis II as is. In other words, as a crewed test flight with the existing Orion heat shield. It also means, though, that the longer it takes to complete the investigation and decision-making process and make the decision, the longer it will be until Artemis II is ready to fly. During the week, the space agency made this statement, quote, NASA leadership completed a review meeting ahead of transporting the booster segments to the vehicle assembly building and will continue meeting throughout the integration process. To meet our current target launch time frame in late 2025, NASA is beginning initial stacking operations of the Artemis II booster aft assemblies, unquote. To add to that, though, the space agency says they still formally baseline Artemis II for launch no earlier than September 2025. The other eight solid rocket motor segments are stored in the Surge 2 building of the RPSF. In a streamlined process, the aft center segments would pretty quickly follow the aft assemblies. However, NASA has also said they do not have a time frame for when that will be, so it doesn't sound like a decision is coming in the next few days. Previously, officials were hoping to have a decision by the end of the year, which is about five weeks away. The booster stacking process for Artemis II was planned without a pause. Back in the summertime, it was expected to take around two months, ten weeks, somewhere around that. If a decision takes until the end of the year or just ahead of the holidays, that would be another two, three, four weeks added to the schedule. And if the current time frame for launch is already late 2025, it's going to be that much more challenging to fly Artemis II by the end of next year. During the week, NASA KSC Public Affairs also posted a few additional still images of the Orion transfer on November 7th from the final assembly systems test cell to the altitude chamber in the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building. A second round of vacuum testing was planned, and that move is now a couple of weeks ago, so I checked in on the status, and PAO said that testing in the chamber was still in progress this past week. With only about a month left in the calendar year, it's looking like Orion won't be ready to hand over to EGS until sometime in the first few months of 2025. There was a flurry of communication this past week trying again to chase down Orion heat shield decisions based on the statements made at the end of October. 
I had previously asked about the Artemis III Orion heat shield, which was already fabricated and assembled with the Artemis I design that is still under investigation. At the end of October, it was said that NASA, quote, knows what to do for future missions. That carries some implications for the Artemis III heat shield, but as of this past week, NASA was saying they have not made any decisions about the Artemis III unit either. So there's a similar schedule dynamic playing out there too. Unless NASA decides to also fly the existing Artemis III heat shield as is, repairing it or replacing it is going to take extra time, and NASA won't say whether that work continues to be on hold or not. Which leaves the question wide open about whether that will also delay completion of the Artemis III Orion assembly and test. Having said that, the longer that Artemis II is delayed, the farther out it would make the earliest that Orion and SLS could fly any kind of Artemis III mission. So, for example, if Artemis II were to fly in November 2025, three years after Artemis I, then about the soonest that Orion and SLS could turn around and be ready to fly Artemis III would be November of 2026. But as is well known by now, the lunar landing mission schedule is more dependent on Starship progress towards getting the HLS variant all the way to the moon. The alternative Artemis III options were being considered in case Starship HLS isn't ready to support a lunar landing by, in this case, the end of 2026. On top of the week's Artemis II stacking start-stop and the latest Starship prototype testing, I also got a set of responses from Boeing to my monthly questions about their part of SLS. Contrary to popular perception, there is no prime contractor for SLS. Boeing is not the prime contractor for the SLS engines, that's L3 Harris, or the boosters, that's Northrop Grumman. It is the prime contractor for the stages, the core stage and the exploration upper stage. Staying in the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center, Boeing says that the plan is to lift core stage 2, the unit for Artemis 2, into VAB High Bay 2 and that's now early next month, December. The new vertical platforms and tooling that will support core stage final assembly, test, and checkout are planned to be complete and activated just prior to that. Once we see the core stage move into that vertical cell for traveled work, completion of that work, and the timing of a move into high bay three for mating to the boosters will be one of the watch items for Artemis II. From a production standpoint, Boeing is now focused on the third and fourth core stage units. Issues with the cell that is used to apply thermal protection system spray-on foam insulation to the large propellant tanks are now the critical path for the part of the core stage 3 build at Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans. Boeing has production facilities now at KSC in addition to MAF. The engine section is outfitted at KSC now, but the rest of the stage is still integrated in New Orleans. The liquid hydrogen tank for core stage three has been ready for its SOFI sprays in cell N at MAF since the spring, and the liquid oxygen tank is now approaching that same point in its production. Boeing said that repairs to the spray equipment in the cell are complete, repairs to the rotating support tooling are in work, and they plan to resume activities in cell N by the end of the year. Right now, Boeing is trying to get the tanks outfitted in time to put the top four-fifths of the stage together next summer and ship that large sub-assembly to KSC by the end of next summer. I also asked about the status of exploration upper stage assembly and test as development continues in preparation for a first launch on Artemis IV towards the end of the decade. Here are those. So at this point, all the weld tools are certified for EUS, including the ones at MAF, which are shared with core stage assembly and test. The first of two articles that need to be completed for the first EUS flight is the qualification or structural test article. Welding has started on the liquid hydrogen tank for the STA, beginning with the two domes. Those will then be welded together with a single barrel in the vertical assembly center, which is currently forecast to start in February. Right now, they are projecting completion of the STA and delivery to Marshall Space Flight Center for that structural testing in early 2026, which is about a year away from now. In other news and notes for the week, the Gateway program published a couple of pictures of propellant tank installations into the power and propulsion element in a NASA piece on November 20th. 
However, the pictures date back to July 1st, almost five months ago. These were taken by prime contractor Maxar at their Palo Alto facility in the California Bay Area. We saw one of these pictures back at the end of August in the presentations from NASA Exploration Leadership to a NASA Advisory Council committee. Given we're now in the lame duck period between administrations, we may not get an update on the Gateway launch schedule until next year. We also saw a shot of the Habitation and Logistics Outpost module in a social media post on November 19th, but it's not clear when the picture was taken. The last update we got was that the HALO module structure was wrapping up proof pressure testing at Tala Selenia Space Italy, and that transportation of the structure to a Northrop Grumman facility here in the U.S. would be sometime in the new year. Thanks to Avir who pointed this out, Axiom Space did note last month, October, that the critical design review for their lunar surface spacesuit was now planned next year in 2025. I'm asking them about the status of the human-in-the-loop vacuum test of the suit, which the Government Accounting Office noted was a prerequisite for the CDR. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. The upcoming change in the U.S. government is a big story, but it's still a couple of months away, so we'll see when the next batch of details or detailed rumors show up. In the meantime, December could turn out to be an eventful month, or at least a month with Artemis-related decisions and announcements, which could be the first announcements since the year began.